I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the week of December 6th to December 12th. I nailed it! And the unicorn stands while the world burns, world burns, world burns. We have to break the news to you gently. We're off for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to cry yourself to sleep. Don't worry, we're going to be posting clips from old dumpster fires. But we all need a break. Even champions recover. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Peloton. I've I've only been speaking in Peloton voice for like the past week. <laughs> Even in text. She sent it to us in like all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, one more ladies. Even champions recover. Peloton voice. <laughs> You need to recover and take care of yourself. You can bet your butt that the people that you look up to take time. They take time for themselves so they can recover. I really could be like a Peloton. You even got the Peloton (laughs) motions going. They like look right into your soul. So we've got this card, Senator Pornhub, MasterCard, COVID deaths, (laughs) (laughs) 9-11. So all I was going to say about this was there was a meme going around and... I know that it's going around when I I get sent the meme from like my boomer aunts and uncles mm-hmm. and it was the number of covid deaths and then it had you know this day and then it was like today more Americans died of covid than 911 like can we st- I can make arbitrary comparisons of deaths all day all day long too what bothers me about this is nobody cares that you know, 1,700 people a day die of heart disease in any given day in America all all year long. And it also is like, yeah, that's a one-day event when we were attacked by terrorists and you're comparing it to a virus that has gone all around the globe. It's not the same thing. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so infuriating to me. More, more people died yesterday because of this than would died in World War II. I'm like, guys, th- these aren't the same things. They're completely different. Unless you want to try and say that this is like a bioterrorism event from China, you can't compare this to 9-11. It's completely different things. P- and COVID deaths aren't the only deaths that matter. This is the other thing that frustrates me about this, is that suddenly those are the only deaths that matter, not the deaths by overdose, not the deaths by despair, depression, not anybody who's dying from heart disease, gun violence, not domestic abuse, none of these deaths, car accidents, like none none of these deaths, which are all usually tragic, matter. Um, the COVID deaths are the only one. And and I I understand that it is sad. It's not something I'm trying to diminish at all. I just, I feel like I have a very strong resistance to feeling emotionally manipulated. And I don't get the feeling that when people are sharing those weird arbitrary comparisons that they actually give a shit about that number. And then they're just trying to either shame you into feeling or being a certain way. It just is um, like off and it has the effect of making people be like shut up Mm -hmm. it has like the opposite effect that Mm -hmm. it should have maybe or maybe i'm just a psychopath which could also be true no i think it does (laughs) no one's gonna stop at that number and be like oh my god now i'll wear a mask if they were already like resisting wearing a mask like that's not gonna work (laughs) very much passes the number of total bombings ever then i'll wear a mask i have seen the light it reminds me of our South Park. 40,000 kids will stop today and no one even cries. <laughs> Say a prayer for the children because they're running out of luck. Come be seen with starving children and pretend you give a fuck. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. 30,000 olds will die today and no one even cries. <laughs> That song is one of Bridget's more brilliant jingles <laughs> ever created. <laughs> Come be seen with COVID patients and pretend you give a fuck. Oh, wait, you can't be seen with them either. <laughs> if you have lost somebody at all this year, I'm sorry because it was a terrible, tragic year for everybody. 
And in particular, I've lost two friends. We couldn't memorialize them properly. It's fucked up with the grieving process. And I'm sorry to all of anybody who's lost anyone this year because on top of it being sad and tragic and just upsetting when you lose someone that you love or know, there is, uh, we, we haven't really been able to grieve properly depending on where you live and in many instances. So truly from the bottom of my heart, no matter who you lost or how, This has been a horrible year to experience that, and I hope you get some nice closure and find a way to, you know, memorialize that person in your own time, and then hopefully when things open up uh, in the correct way or right way or way that they would want. Oh, the other thing I was going to talk about, that's why it said MasterCard and Senator. MasterCard and Visa are no longer accepting payment at Pornhub, basically. I believe it was Senator Hawley. And the senator was like, I I push all of these companies to do the same thing. And I was like, ah, this seems like a bad precedent because it seems like it's only a matter of time before they do that with your guns or with your mm-hmm. NRA or with something else that you actually like. Yeah. And I and peop- I get it. It's a gray area. It's, it's a gray area because... I think MasterCard and Visa have every right to say we won't do business with anyone we know is engaged in illegal activities. But I would say put pressure on the company to reform. And if there are illegal activities taking place on this company that has otherwise legal practices and consensual adults engaging in things that are not illegal, you would prosecute the people who are trafficking humans and child porn and all. These are things that, that this is why we have the FBI. And the other thing is, there's more of this on Facebook than there even is on Pornhub. Pornhub has done things to try and change this. And so now what? They can't take anything Visa and MasterCard by that rule. You shouldn't be accepting payments on Facebook because there's tons of this stuff. And it just seems like a bad precedent, letting the financial infrastructure dictate what we can and cannot do with our money. Cherry pick. Like yeah, which be, moral causes and let get them behind. be the arbiters of it. Yeah. This is a bad practice, and you are either for this practice or against it. You can't say because conservatives, in particular, were all against it when they kicked Sargon of uh, um, Akkad off Patreon. They've done this with hate speech. Milo's completely been deplatformed. You can't. He can't even get a Venmo. So we're already seeing this, and I just think it's. I think it's a terrifying, chilling practice to be letting them be making decisions about where we can and can't spend our money and that everyone should stand against this, particularly senators. It holds us hostage as consumers in a weird way. It's very strange. I mean, this, this, we've seen this. There are a lot of the left wing activists will put pressure on MasterCard and Visa to not accept payment from certain companies that they deem morally wrong for hate speech and then who gets to be the arbiter of this this is dangerous shit. it's like youtube hello youtube saying that they're gonna take things off that don't support the election i mean it just it it makes things even worse mm-hmm. let people make up their minds it makes things even worse when you're saying we're gonna ban look what happened to alex jones he's like more popular than ever in the entire world it's a slippery slope well and you ban something and now suddenly everybody wants it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like Agenda 2030. Sam. Oh, boy, Sam. She's still ringing Did you get any manifestos this week, Sam? (laughs) No. Well, someone sent me a Google Drive link, but I wasn't going (laughs) to (laughs) click Good call, Sam. I was like, I'm not clicking on this. She's much too paranoid to fall for that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, okay. Seems sketchy. If you want to trick me, you got to try harder. Going to have to wake up pretty early in the morning to trick Sammy Flaps and Folds <laughs> over here, even though she believes literally every conspiracy theory you could ever put in front of her and will probably join any cult that you offer. <laughs> Parade of morons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we all know the truth. Uh, who's in the Parade of Morons this week? I have no idea. Okay. Fans roast Cardi B for wanting to buy an $88,000 uh, purse. Cardi B and Trump just prove you can't buy class. <laughs> <laughs> That's the snob in me. Cardi B, 
decided to tweet in the middle of a pandemic in which many people are losing their jobs and don't know how they're going to pay their rent and they're getting evicted and the holidays are coming up and they're getting laid off. And it's a pretty much a show disaster for anyone who's not making a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year, at least. Should I get this $80,000, $88,000 purse? And rightfully, her audience was like, read the room, bitch. And she fought back, doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down by saying, you know, now I'm definitely going to get the purse. She showed receipts of places she had donated to. I say donated because even when she talks about how she donated a million dollars last year, if you dig deep into that, it was actually Square, the company that owns cash, who is putting up the million dollars. She just used her celebrity to donate it. It wasn't even her money. (laughs) Come on, Cardi. And so, yeah, she got really defensive really quick. And I was laughing at just the irony because Cardi B was a Bernie bro. Bernie is like tax rich and has been, you know, engaging in this class war. I, I don't care. I'm not all for like wealth shaming. I don't care. Make your money. Spend your money. I, You know where I stand. Capitalism always wins. I think there need to be checks and balances. But I also think if you're somebody who's supporting Bernie, don't be surprised when your audience suddenly turns on you for tweeting about a fucking purse that costs double what the average American makes in a year. Yeah. Crazy. Like an Ugg Birkin bag. It and looks like, gross. and it's ugly. Yeah. And if you're going to buy the purse, just buy it. Like, don't make a big production about yeah. it on social media. That's like poor shaming. It really does trigger the, like, New England snob in me. Uh-huh. Like, if you're going to act like new money, we're going to treat you like <laughs> new money, Cardi B. <laughs> then we've got head of strategic comms at CNN is advertising a $380 sweater. Okay, well... Joke's on me. I went down the rabbit hole of the company behind that sweater and I became a Bernie bro. (laughs) (laughs) Because when you read the company, what's the name of the company? It's something lingua franca or something. I went down this rabbit hole. The woman who started this, she doesn't come from much, but she married this guy who owns like five hotels. And there's this one quote. At the time, Hrushka McPherson was running the party website, Guest of a Guest, which she'd founded in 2007 that weekend. In February 2016, she was in Montauk and followed her (laughs) therapist's advice by embroidering (laughs) Booyah on an old cashmere sweater. (laughs) She posted a photo on Instagram. And that's basically how this was born. But is there a whiter sentence ever (laughs) written in my entire life? Like, is there an Upper East Side, yeah. Following her therapist's advice. Her, she was anxious, and so she, she. Old cashmere sweater. She's like, these are hand embroidered. That's why they're $380. It is, again, read the fucking room, Cardi B and lady at CNN. Yeah. People, what is wrong with everyone? People keep doing this. Celebrities are so detached from reality. And the, do you actually know any waitresses or working class people at all? There's such a disconnect. These are the two bubbles in America, the real two bubbles. It's not red and blue. It's working class and, and pajama jobbers. Yep. We'll get to the pajama jobbers. Well, moving into Capitalism Always Wins, Colin Kaepernick teams up with Ben and Jerry's to release his new non-dairy flavor, Change the World. (laughs) 100% of Colin's proceeds will go to the Know Your Rights Camp with matching support from Ben and Jerry's. Know Your Rights Camp is founded by Colin, advancing the liberation and well-being of black and brown communities. I mean, good for him that he's donating it all, but God... Is there anything more nauseating than an ice cream brand getting all woke? Ugh. Although Ben and Jerry's was kind it's of pre woke. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're from Vermont. All, aren't they a gay <laughs> may, couple? I think uh, maybe. I thought they were. I thought I Ben like... and Jerry were husband. Possib- I it's possible. Don't know. We'll have to research this. But they're from, they found, started in Vermont <laughs> or Maine, right? I had no idea. Very New England. Ben and Jerry. Hippies. Yeah, hippies. They're freaking limousine hippies <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not be together. <laughs> Kaepernick just drive. I don't know. Good for him. Whatever. It is capitalism always winning. It's just all this synergy makes yeah. me want to vomit. I bet the ice cream sucks. The only good Ben and Jerry's ice cream is fish food. Everyone knows this. You love the cinnamon one too, don't you? Bridget noodles alone. 
Oh, yeah, the, the cinnamon oatmeal. was so oatmeal. good. Yeah. The strawberry cheesecake is good, too. Okay, there are some good Straight Ben & Jerry's. But <laughs> chocolate chip cookie dough. Come Cherry on. Cherry Garcia was great, too. Ben & Jerry's, if you want to sponsor Dumpster Fire. Ben & Jerry's, we will donate none of your money. We should we make a Dumpster Fire you brand. And yet also talk about how good your ice cream is. <laughs> Capitalism's winning, see? We will donate none of your money to charity. We will mock you, but we will sell the shit out of your <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> anyway, we could talk about ice cream all day. But let's move on to the <laughs> Kardashians Inc. a Disney deal and set new project on Hulu. This just makes me feel like someday my tip picks won't stop me from coming up with a vaccine that can microchip all the babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trajectory. A lot going on in that <laughs> sentence. I loved your tweet on this. Oh, I just think it's funny because I actually do love America. And Cardi B is another great example of this. America is great because America is one of the only countries in the world where you can start your empire with a sex tape and end up with a Disney deal. The wow. best joke everyone made was like, I thought it was the other way around. You start a Disney and then you end up with a sex <laughs> tape. <laughs> like, fair. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Dark. I can think of a couple examples yeah, of that. Yeah, that's actually true. So it's the reverse. Good for you, Kardashians. I don't understand how the Kardashians are still a thing. I just don't understand that. Aren't people sick of them? Like, what? What? How are they Not still appealing the to people? They're a global brand I now. Know, but I don't understand. I I've Obviously, never got it they're... ever because we are snobs, Maggie. Oh, that's true. We're elitists. We're old money. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the keeping up with the Kardashians is all about flaunting their new money. <laughs> <laughs> and by old money, we're so our money is so old it's been squandered it's by the gen- <laughs> generations before us. <laughs> I do look down on people who who flaunt their wealth like that. Uh-huh. I absolutely do, which is hilarious, given the environment that I sit in. But I'm one of the people. I'm a populist hero. <laughs> <laughs> That's I right. Sound that way when she you just dubs herself a populist hero. <laughs> just make a little Che t shirt, but it's me with my unicorn, <laughs> my unicorn <laughs> hoodie on. Yeah. And like the red and the black graphic. I will liberate the people from their pajama jobs. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> And set them back to work in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> set them back to work on their feet in restaurants and in other working class jobs. And they're like, no, thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Our sponsor this week is Sheath Underwear. Excuse me, I'm talking about undies online. You can't talk about your unmentionables online. An Iraq online. war veteran created these to keep his unmentionables from sticking to his leg. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of men I know have tried these, and they say it keeps their nuts from sticking to their leg while they work out, which is quite a miracle. One man went so far as to say, I didn't think about my nuts for six hours. (laughs) No, but in all seriousness, the men I've talked to have raved about the dual pouch because it is a separate pouch for you to put your family jewels, and all of the important things that you want to carry into future generations. The women's underwear are made in Modell. It is so comfortable. It lets your privates breathe. I love this brand. I seriously wear their sports bras every single day. Sheath underwear is fantastic for the holidays because everybody loves underwear for Christmas gifts. Men and women can have matching sets. Check all their stuff out at sheathunderwear.com. Use the code DUMPSTER for 20% off. Thank you, Sheath, for sponsoring us. We love you. And happy holidays, everybody, with your new undies. Moving on to California. Dream of Californication. Five California lawmakers dine outside at restaurant despite virus surge and stay-at-home orders. Yeah, it's just more legislators being hypocrites. Mm-hmm. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> These people, I'm so mad at them. Yeah. The latest attempt to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom has hit the 10% threshold required to get county registrars to begin verifying signatures. That would indicate that at least 149,571 signatures have been submitted so far. So that's what's been submitted. According to the people who are collecting them, it's 700,000. Our work here is almost done in getting Gavin Newsom recalled. But it will be fucking just like Gavin to nominate himself for one of the Senate seats that might come up. 
Wow. He can appoint himself. Wow. Ugh. Yeah. It would be like him to do that, seeing yeah. the writing on the wall with like the recall, because they are getting nervous, his campaign. And it's because of people like us and you folks who are out there doing the work on the streets, collecting signatures, and also just talking shit about what a hypocrite, douchebag, slimeball that it moron is. Moron! Moron! Okay, then we have Elon Musk ditches California for Texas. I mean, how is Gavin Newsom still even in charge? You And yesterday was announced that Oracle's leaving too. Wow. These are billion dollar companies leaving California, all going to Texas. Oracle's going to Austin. Wow. Everyone's going to Austin. <laughs> and a successful wink. <laughs> 2020, we have succeeded. <laughs> I learned how to wink. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's leaving. Elon's leaving my nemesis. But I don't blame him. What point do they have staying here? No. I thought this was an interesting line. Every year for the past 15 years, about 100,000 more Californians leave the state than other Americans move in with the most popular destination consistently Texas. Oh, it's a crisis for sure. Texas, mm-hmm. is, Texas is the best. Texas is where it's at. Hopefully these morons won't turn it blue. Do not move to Texas and turn it blue, idiots. Although somebody was telling me that they've done studies and it's usually second and third te- generation Texans who vote blue and that first generation Texans who move there, the refugees from these other states actually vote red and they're the reason that it's staying red. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I would assume that at least some people fleeing California would have learned their lesson and been like, I'm changing my mind. I mean, I wouldn't vote blue if I moved there. I would be. It's that great uh, quote from my friend who lives in Austin. Keep Austin weird, but keep Austin surrounded. (laughs) That's so (laughs) good. That's great. Yeah. I think it's like, okay, you guys can all be crazy in Austin, but we're going to surround you and be red. So... (laughs) (laughs) then we have russia so russian russia tells vaccine recipients no alcohol for two months russians are like ah no thank you (laughs) i loved bubbla if you're not following bubbla on twitter and you're on you should follow her she's hilarious and she said laughing my ass off we're all gonna die (laughs) she quote tweeted it (laughs) because it is like why can't you drink for two months after you take the vaccine and if it's because drinking kills the virus i think russians are fine (laughs) (laughs) this is my theory that the more you drink the less likely you are to get a virus generally because alcohol kills everything that enters your system this is why i think i stayed healthy on the road when i was traveling around the world yeah hitting the sauce yeah (laughs) hitting the hard liquors yeah, Russians are like, I would rather fucking die of coronavirus than not drink for two months. Seriously, who's asking Russians not to drink? <laughs> yeah, craziness. Proof we're living in a simulation. Black Mirror creator Charlie Brooker shares teaser for special episode Death to 2020. The teaser was 10 seconds long. It said nothing. Sam and I were talking about this before we started recording. (laughs) It's going to be hilarious when Trump gets in the helicopter for his big exit. And then tonight on Poland, Ashton pops his head out and he's like, surprise. (laughs) You've been wronged. (laughs) Like Black Mirror comes out and it's just Ashton Kutcher. It's like this whole year has been. A Black Mirror episode and also an episode of Punked. That actually wouldn't surprise me. This is what we've been conditioned to live with. (laughs) It's like very meta. This entire year has been a global reality show for aliens. (laughs) It is the South Park coming true. Uh Researchers invent a smellicopter by attaching live moth antenna to a drone. Everything's getting so weird. This is an antenna from a live moth. It can smell odors and follow those to the source. I'm convinced that this is what we're all going to need when we all lose our smell to coronavirus. (laughs) We're just going to have little smellicopters flying around. (laughs) We'll each have a personalized smellicopter drone. Smelling things for us. We live in the weirdest times. We live in the weirdest times. (laughs) Bringing us to what is happening. Yes. The monolith appears in Warsaw, Poland. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it popped up on a riverbank in Polish capital, Warsaw. This is just getting boring now. Yeah. Come up with another trick, huh?
I guess we should just keep going. Okay. I, um, How may we serve you, oh mighty monolith? <laughs> say what we say when we say it. <laughs> Representative Louis Gomertz. Wow, his last name is really Gomert. <laughs> Gomert's tooth fell out at his press conference. Are we not going to acknowledge that I was just <laughs> blasted into the ether by a monolith? We freed you. <laughs> we freed you. What was it like, Bridget? I don't know. I became one with everything. It was really cool. Ooh. I wanted to stay there forever. Unfortunately, we cut. We lost the footage of Sam and I overcoming the monolith. <laughs> And wrestling it into submission. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate you bringing me back. We got you, fam. But now I know what it's like out there. What it's like to be a monolith. <laughs> what do they actually want, Bridget? It's none of your damn business. <laughs> I'm one of them now. The monoliths have gotten to her. Speaking of one of us, like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons, and tell all of your friends about us. Subscribe to Fetacy.com or Patreon, where you can join the community and see the unedited version of this show. Okay, Representative Louis Gohmert's tooth fell out during his press conference. I've said it a million times, and I'll say it again. I don't want the olds running the country. Their teeth are falling out. They're forgetting briefings. These are the people in charge of us. And what is going to happen? I don't know what anyone what to say about this. Anyone? <laughs> Monolith. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, school board won't reverse fourth grade boy's suspension for BB gun incident where he showed a, a BB gun on a Zoom screen when he was at home. Trying to move it out of his brother's out of the way so his brother didn't step on it. Uh-huh. Somebody, Brett Weinstein, made a great analogy, said, by the logic of this little boy bringing a BB gun to school because he's at Zoom school, the teacher is in a little boy's room. <laughs> <laughs> this is so insane. I mean, I, this story is beyond insane. I, I can't even it's get my mind right. It's infuriating. Yeah. Yeah, everybody should be outraged about this shit. It's not just government overreach. It's just overreach in general. Someone was telling me that a kid got suspended once from school for making a gun shaped out of a Pop-Tart. Like they, they like bit their Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun oh and they got God. suspended. The teacher was like, I was very unsettled or something. Oh, my God. Anyway, and this is the stuff people should be getting outraged about. Then we have a new autonomous zone is being built in Portland. Burning Man for Pores Part 2. <laughs> I don't know what to say about these people. I, I, I just think it looks like the worst nightmare of my life. <laughs> Seriously. it's like, It looks like what I imagine in dystopia, but everybody. I'm like, why are you guys living the way we're all going to be living soon? <laughs> uh, right. You're voluntarily <laughs> doing this. You should be enjoying hot water and not cooking rats over an oil drum <laughs> while you have the chance to still do that. I feel like whenever I see these parties, it just, or whatever they are, it looks like a bunch of white kids on meth pretending that they're poor. <laughs> I think that's, that's a great accurate description. <laughs> description. <laughs> Here's why I love this community because I had somebody donate an advertisement and suggested that we do it for Ha Ha Hot Sauce because he knows that he's a struggling comedian and saw that everybody is shutting down again because of the COVID. So you guys are not only great consumers, you're not only great thinkers, you're not only renegades, you're not only independent and wonderful and purple pilled you are also generous af sorry it's not a new bottle but <laughs> as you can see i use the crap out of this stuff this is like my third bottle i've gone through i could just drink it get yourself some ha ha hot sauce it is made by a working comedian he sells it on the side to supplement his income when he's not able to do comedy or when he's not doing comedy or when he's doing comedy, he, sends it, he sells it as merch. Dave Yates, you can follow him at Yates Comedy. It's delicious. You can use it on everything, which I do. Sam can oh, vouch. Oh, it's so delicious. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, awesome. it's, you know what I love about this is that it's a very usable hot sauce. Some hot sauces try to be like the hottest and they try to be all, all and this has just got the right like vinegar mixed with the, pear with the spice and the heat comes right on the end. Mm. Ah, 
It's so good. I I really use it on everything. But it doesn't overpower your food. It just gives no. it a nice kick. It's the perfect hot sauce. Uh-huh. You can go to hahahotsauce.com. And um, it's also a great stocking stuffer and a great gift. Mm-hmm. And you're supporting a working comedian and people who are involved in the performing arts who are taking the biggest hit and of many people who are taking hits, but performing artists in particular are really struggling. So if you want to also help someone out, this is an easy way to do it. Thank you again for your support. It means the world to me. Find some causes to support during this holiday season and whether it's hot sauce or comedians or musicals or whatever it might be, just uh, do what you can with what you can and it'll be win, win, win for everyone. Sprain my eyes. Pajama jobs. Do, 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 do. I made my own pajama job, so I don't feel bad about this. Carol Markowitz, who's hilarious, and you should definitely follow her if you don't on Twitter. She tweeted about how people who have pajama jobs are the ones who are generally like, everyone stay home. And it's like they have, again, the two bubbles. They have no fucking connection to the working class whatsoever. And it's easy for you to say that when you have everything being delivered to you and you get to work at home. And she called them pajama jobs, which I think is the most genius term of 2020. And it's basically people who can work from home. Sam and Maggie. Um, <laughs> and, Bridget. and Bridget. I am an entrepreneur. <laughs> She's a small biz pajama job. She's a small business owner entrepreneur. Yes. Pajama jobber. It's not a it's a stressful pajama job. <laughs> this shit could all go off the rails and I'll be out up in the new Chaz smoking meth and pretending that I'm a a purple haired white kid with no sense of anything. Smell <laughs> <laughs> With no sense of smell. <laughs> You're the one that wanted to wear your pajamas to the job on the job today. It's an honor of all the people who can't wear their pajamas <laughs> to work. No, it is it, it's just another disconnect. There's yep. there's a big disconnect. If you have a pajama job and you're talking about how everyone should shut everything down, maybe go talk to people that that's affecting. And do you actually know anyone in the working class? I wonder. Then we have dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? (laughs) (laughs) That was the last dumpster diving of the year. Joe Exotic (laughs) wrote Kim Kardashian a letter begging her to ask Trump to pardon him. Is there a more 2020 headline <laughs> in the world than that one? I don't think so. I think it sums up all of this year. To ask President Trump. Yeah, Joe Exotic, Kim Kardashian, President Trump. We live in a South Park episode. <laughs> a team of code breakers have solved the Zodiac Killer's 340 cipher code. I mean, we give um the internet a lot of crap about being detectives, but it turns out some of you crack cases. And it was creepy as f- as creepy as you would imagine. And boom, suddenly got a really clean message. This was actual code breakers, though, kind of around the world in a community were working on this. They, some of them were actually professional code breakers. But they're, it's, they're, they're not like with the CIA. No, they're still like, <laughs> they're still like doing it on their own Yeah, time. it's like yeah. They're, they're like code breaking enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then in Breaking Bridget, time person of the year. Sorry. (laughs) Let me compose my emotions. Are you going to announce who the time person of the year is? It doesn't say who it is. (laughs) Maggie! (laughs) Maggie lives in a... What is it like to be... Do you know who it is? No. Are you kidding me? (laughs) You don't... Take a guess. Take a wild guess. Take a guess, Maggie. Make an educated guess. Nope. Keep going. Tell me it's not Gavin Newsom. <laughs> no. No. Keep going. Oh, Maggie. Trump? No. no. Are you kidding me? They wouldn't give Trump. I mean, they, they did might. give they've, Stalin they've and They've given it before. Yeah. In really? terms of, it's more about, it's more like, about influence. the influence, the impact a person has had on the world. Well, I guess he's had a lot of I have of no influence. idea. Just tell me. <laughs> I just want, I want to live in the world that you live in, (laughs) pajama job, Maggie, where you don't have to read the news or pay attention to the horrors that are our society. Um, It was Biden and Harris. Oh, God. Yeah. 
The media might as well have just stood on in front of the camera and given a big F you to like half of America and also just everyone. It's like, what a f- pandering, hacking, bullshit. I, no, they haven't even done anything yet. They've no. done nothing. No. I was outraged about this because I was like, hi, healthcare workers, people who came up with a vaccine on the fly, the fastest vaccine ever made in the history, doctors, frontline workers, essential workers, small business owners, people who lost people, literally fucking anybody other than these two. Uh I was saying on Twitter, we the people deserve it. We the people who have been there for each other because as much as I think that if you zoom out on the macro and look, it seems like we're very divided. But what I've seen is that people help each other on the ground, no matter what their politics are, even when they're divided. They will help each other. And I've seen Americans reach out and help each other with their restaurants. We've been go funding each other, Jesus fucking Christ, and making all these rich people even richer. And meanwhile, all supporting each other. We deserve people of the year. You Average American, average citizen of the world, you deserve person of the year because none of our politicians deserve this shit. They've all failed us and they're absolutely useless. Stop worshiping them. It's creepy. Stop thinking that they're going to save you. They're not going to. If anything has been revealed in 2020, it's that politicians aren't going to save us. We're going to save ourselves. And also, it's not a right if it's something that you don't have to fight for. So don't go fucking skipping down the street, giving them up to these douchebags who only want more power. We are going to help each other. And I think we're going to do it together. And that is my big message for 2020. But seriously, time, fuck off. Mic drop, I'm out. (laughs) Listen, guys, we're done. We made it. You made it with us. If you just discovered us, welcome. If you are here for the long haul, welcome. We're looking forward to 2021. I feel good things on the horizon. Don't give up hope. Enjoy the holidays with your families or even alone. If you are having a hard time, reach out to people. Don't isolate. This is not the time to isolate. I mean, you have to isolate, but don't isolate more than you have to. And we love you. You have made this year worthwhile for me. You've given me meaning and purpose and a reason to get up and do this and connect with you guys. Even when I didn't necessarily feel like it, it's been such a joy and a privilege. And I am just so excited to keep doing this. And yeah, it's been it's been a journey. We'll be back in two weeks, hopefully. Now we have some Internet is Glorious to leave you out. <laughs> Let's cover that bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Stop. I had so many cute outfits planned for this year that I couldn't wear. I love it. I couldn't wear it. Love it. Couldn't wear it. Then there's this. Love it. Couldn't wear it. Oh, it's some of those. Fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. This week on Walk Ins Welcome, we had Harleen Carr. She started Ground News, and I have been so impressed with Ground News and what they're doing. I had to talk to the woman who started it. She is an aerospace engineer, she's brilliant, and she thinks that our media has more problems harder to solve than space. That was a great conversation. She's brilliant, fascinating person. Check it out. Check out Ground News, they're doing amazing work. I also wrote a piece, What I Got Wrong in 2020. It is not comprehensive. That would have been a novel, but it is on Spectator. Check that out. It was quite a few things. I appeared on the Babylon Bee podcast. We had a great time. I love those guys. And as comedians, is to kind of call out those hypocrisies where you see them from the people who are in power. It was super fun and hilarious and 
just lots of laughs. So check out the Babylon Bee podcast where I was laughing and joking and telling stories I know I've never told. Donate to our PayPal, subscribe to our Patreon, join us at fetacy.com at either Patreon or fetacy.com. You will get the unedited version of this shit show, which is quite a shit show when you see it unedited. And also go to bridgetfetacy.com for merch. You have a uh, limited edition greeting cards. They're not just for holidays. We have two Valentine's Day cards, one holiday, and um, one get well soon. It's a comprehensive set for all of your winter needs. We have mugs, t-shirts, beanies, socks, great gifts for holidays. I sound like Gavin Newsom. Thank you, Better Fetacy, for your research. Please follow Better Fetacy. It is a parody account of my account, and they honestly do a better job being me than I do being myself. So check that out. Check out Better Fetacy. Thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for the juicy mic. Get all of your audio needs at zenproaudio.com. They have been so generous to us, and I would not be able to have such great sound without this mic and without their help. So thank you and support them, small business. Thank you to my sponsors, Sheath and Ha Ha Hot Sauce. Like, subscribe, and comment. Tell us your dreams. Tell us your hopes. Tell us something good that happened to you in 2020. What was the silver lining of your 2020? Tell me what your therapist thinks of your dreams. <laughs> if your therapist wants you to embroider an old cashmere sweater, what would it say? What would be? <laughs> that's a good one, Sam. I think what, I think that's it. We will s- check it out. Yeah. Sheath. Da, 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 da. We'll see you in the new year, guys. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of December 6th to December 12th. I'm Bridget Fetacy. Now make me rich. <laughs> <laughs>